Every page that ranks on Google, every single one of them, has the same seven things in common. The pages you can't get to rank, they're missing at least one of those seven. So today I'm gonna to show you those seven ranking factors, ranked from easiest to hardest to implement, and how to apply them to any pages on your Shopify website. If you implement just the first three, you'll probably find yourself on page one, do all seven, and it's almost impossible not to rank number one on Google. So let's get to the first tip. Number one, build more internal links. The more internal links that you build to a page, the higher it'll rank. That is an undisputable fact in SEO. You can use a tool like Screaming Frog, which I recommend, or Ahrefs internal link tool if you're feeling less confident about the, the Screaming Frog tool to find any internal link opportunities for whichever page you're trying to rank higher, okay? I would use exact or near match anchors for the fastest results and prioritize internal links from these pages. So these source URLs should be linked. The internal link should be at the near the top of that source URL page because the higher an internal link is on page, the more valuable it is. Also from high authority and high traffic pages, okay? If you go link to your target page from some page on your website that doesn't get any traffic, that is significantly less valuable than linking to that target page from a, your most traffic page on your website, okay? So think about that. One other note, you should build more internal links to all pages you want to rank, okay? But when it comes to e-commerce, not all of your pages are equal, not even close. Your, your collection pages and your product pages are more important to rank than blog posts, so these pages in kind should have more internal links than your average blog post, okay? Number two, build lookalike content. Most e-commerce brands that we work with build their site in a silo. They never even think to look at how their competitor sites are designed. The best e-commerce brands, the ones that pass seven figures are growing quickly to eight figures, they model their design directly off their competitors and it is why they win. So there's an easy question to ask yourself. Is my page, looking at it, genuinely better than the top two to three results on Google? Now, you should be as objective as you possibly can and as critical of your page in this moment while you're asking this question as you possibly can. If it's not ranking on page one at all, the answer is obviously no, okay? Better pages rank higher, simple as that. If it's not better, well, then that's why it doesn't rank on Google, okay? Analyze the top two to, three, two to three results of your keyword. And again, be critical of yourself and of your page. Compare those findings to your page. Your, you should make your page quite literally look more like the pages that already rank because Google clearly likes those. It should look the same or better than the top three results. That's it. Obviously, this applies to whatever page you're currently trying to rank higher, but you should repeat this on all pages, okay? Now, when I say look better, content structure, um, mobile design, all these kinds of things come into play. Better is pretty all-encompassing, um, but if it looks like trash compared to the number one result, well, that's a pretty good reason it's not ranking. Number three, write data-driven data content. Google Search Console is without a doubt the best SEO tool for analyzing and improving your content. Okay, there are a lot of AI tools out there that will do it for you. I like Search Console. I don't pay for, I, I very rarely pay for any AI kind of like enrichment tools like Surfer or whatever. Evaluate the performance of your top 10 to 20 product and collection pages in Search Console and just set a, a filter to view only whichever page you're currently trying to rank higher. Um, clicks, impressions, and average position in Search Console should be toggled on for whatever page that is. Set the timeline to the last 28 days, that'd be my recommendation, and then sort the queries by impressions highest to lowest, okay? So the most impressed keyword would be first, even if it's not the most clicked keyword, okay? Um, for the top 10 most impressed queries, ask a question to yourself. Is this query present on the page I'm trying to rank for, okay? Just copy, like Control C, whatever query that is, open your page, hit Control F, paste in whatever key keyword that is. If it's there, great, move on to the next keyword. If it's not there, find a way to add it in. Um, add that query to your, depending on the importance of that query slash keyword, subheadings, paragraph copy, internal links to that page, meta title if it's hyper important, h1 if it's hyper important, okay? Just get it matching. Number four, build similar pages. Let's say you're a supplement brand that wants to rank your collection page for the keyword protein powder. You're gonna need to use all seven tac tactics in this video because that keyword is hyper competitive. But this one will probably be the most profitable for your brand and probably the easiest to implement and get you the fastest results. Um, I'm gonna guess you don't just sell one kind of protein powder. You also sell protein powder for different use cases, weight loss slash weight gain, different ingredients or flavors, whey, hemp, pea, plant-based, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, whatever, and for different kinds of people, men, women, kids, athletes, bodybuilders, runners, whatever. So 
I just went to Semrush and I took the screenshot of just a quick extension of if I was if I was a protein powder brand right now, all the collections I would not all, but a sample of the collections I would go build right now to improve my chances of ranking number one on Google. Um, I added sixteen of them, just very quick. This took me forty seconds on Semrush. Protein powder for muscle gain, protein powder for weight gain, for women, for fat loss, for weight loss, for men, for coffee, for aged kids, low carb diet, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, some of these are, are not super competitive, you know, 20, 15 to 30, 35. Some of them are more competitive, but they're all significantly less competitive than protein powder, which is like 80 something. Okay. So this will give you better chance to rank. Okay. And the total search volume of these is actually 47.7K. And again, that's just 16 keywords, and there are a hell of a lot more. I only went down to 1,300 search volume. There were keywords that got like 100 searches a month that are still, I think, pretty profitable. So you could exhaust this list and probably hit like 50 or 60 protein powder-related keywords. As I said, the easiest way to get more visibility on Google is to actually build more pages. 10 pages on your site, that's 10 chances. 100 pages, 100 chances, 1,000 pages, so on. You get it, okay? Number five, fix your technical SEO. Now, not something I talk about a lot, but it can hold you back from ranking number one on Google, without a doubt. I do not recommend that you pay an agency or a fiber freelancer or Upwork or whatever for some audit. Don't care how cheap it is, don't care how expensive it is. A lot of these things you can fix on your own with a few YouTube videos and a few free trials. I would get a free seven day trial of Samurai Ahrefs, run a crawler of your website, fix the top issues. You can also, if you have a small website, use a tool like siteliner.com which I think is free up to 500 URLs. Uh, and it'll tell you, like, it'll give you action steps on what to fix and how to fix it and why. The biggest wins, without question, fixing any broken links slash 404 errors, um, just set up 301 redirects, reclaiming any broken backlinks. So if you're trying to rank a page and it has five backlinks that all of a sudden no longer exist because of whatever reason, go reclaim them. Immediately injecting five links into your site will help, or to that page will help you rank higher, of, of course. Disavowing any toxic backlinks. Now these could be to your entire domain or they could be to specifically your page, but in some cases, in many cases, disavowing toxic links, a high volume of them can help kind of unstick a page in Google rankings. You can also add schema to a page. We do this for all pages, well not all pages, but core pages, products, collections, homepage, any massive FAQ pages, blogs, things of that nature. Which type you add will depend on the page type you're trying to rank. I think there's a couple thousand types of schema so you'll need to look through that library to figure it out or you can just ask chat to see which kind to add and it'll help you issues i'd recommend skipping hrefs and semrush are going to throw up warnings or errors like your meta description is too long too short or missing that's not an error um, image file size is too large wouldn't call it an error could be an improvement though um, that would kind of fall under the page speed conversation of this i would just use an image compression and alt text app they're like five ten bucks a month on shopify could you do it manually and save code? For sure. Uh, but if you want to rank it quickly and just fix it and you don't want to spend time manually compressing a bunch of images, just get an app. I think Crush is like five bucks a month and it's typically the one I recommend to brands and I'm not affiliated with that. It's just the recommendation. Um, you fix all these items in seven days, you won't have to pay for your monthly subscription of Ahrefs or SEMrush um, or an SEO audit, okay? Pretty easy. Six, build backlinks. If your content if your page looks the same and your content is good, technical SEO is dialed in with whatever page is ranked top two or three, backlinks are gonna be the number one ranking factor for Google, okay? No questions asked. If you, the more higher quality links you have than your competition, the higher your likelihood of outranking them is, like without, without question, that is the truth. Best ways to build them quickly, if you wanna rank a page on Google, link exchange with friends, other brands. Ask people in your niche, ask, brands you've met along the way, ask your friends, don't care. You can even send emails to people and ask them, doesn't matter. Or you can buy them, okay? Cold email, pay them, link marketplaces, pay them, whatever. You could build a handful of links in a few days, or in a day for that matter, for a couple hundred bucks, all of a sudden you're ranking number one. Uh, probably the most, not probably, this is probably the most effective way to rank any page higher on Google. Again, all things being equal, it's really gonna come down to who has a higher volume of better quality backlinks. Um, it, link building is, of course, does cost money and it is nuanced. That's the reason it's at number six. If it was easy and free, I'd put it at number one because it's the biggest ranking factor, but it's not. So cost money nuance, hence why it's at number six. Now, the last one, number seven, build supporting pages. Topical authority. I've not talked about this a lot on this channel uh, recently because it has it's not lost its efficacy. It just takes a lot longer to build it with so much AI content out there. And because people are not searching the top of the funnel, topical authority is a little bit less relevant 
Okay, still can be done. Um, it still can help if you've got the time and the resources to invest in it. It's just going to take some time. Now, what is it? Who do you think ranks higher between two sites? Site A, using the protein powder example, they've got a few collections, a few product pages, and some other standard site pages. Think your about page, your service, uh, like terms and conditions, returns page, things like that. Basic standard pages. Or site B, protein powder, same few collections, same few products, standard pages, and 50 to 100 supporting blogs that demonstrate their expertise in the protein powder niche, talking about the benefits of it, the ingredients, um, the use cases, why you should look at this protein powder versus other ones, how it compares to normal food, all that kind of stuff, how it balances in a macro, like a healthy macronutrient diet, all those kinds of things. Again, if you're answering the question honestly, of course it's going to be site B, and Google thinks the same way as well. So topical authority, when you do your internal linking correctly, let's say you build a bunch of topical authority around a protein powder for weight loss collection page, you build a bunch of internal links from those topical authority blogs to that page, you massively increase the likelihood that that collection page is going to rank number one on Google and, of course, make you money. See you guys in the next video.